listen, everyone's talking about Billy. You know, he scores a goal like that last night. I mean, he's got a ton of fans of his that, you know, really want to see him on the club. And listen, from what we've seen so far, I think that he's done everything he can to make a case that he should be on the team. I talked about this earlier, Scott, but I mean, I'm sure you were there. Rick Bonus was talking about Billy's situation going into these last two games. And he basically yeah. said he has the opportunity to earn a spot on the team with these games. Now, listen, coaches say a lot of things sometimes that may be, well, somewhat truthful, somewhat not. Like, I don't know whether this was just lip service to a young man that's doing everything he can to play but is in a really bad situation because of the waiver rules and the fact that he's waivers exempt. Um, but how does this play out? And and listen, will we see him on Thursday against Ottawa? And if he has another strong game, is he, never mind, on the team, could he be in the top six actually playing in Calgary next Wednesday? I think the door's open. I mean, I was the one that asked a couple of those, those questions to to Rick, and, you know, he, it's there for him, and, 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 and it, that was the one quote, and the other one was, um, it'll be decided over the last two games. And I think the fact that Billy's still here <clears throat> speaks a lot to how far Billy's come. I, I think... Again, I've written about this. I, I think the easy road, and, and we all know what the easy road is here, the, the easy way out is simply to send them down because it alleviates a headache that the Jets have. Um, and, and But you know, my, my argument here for Vili is different this year because this is a team that said often, um, and, and, and obviously going through the summer and the way they did, and you know, not rebuilding and all that sort of thing, they're in win-now mode. And and th there's a couple factors at play here. If Billy Hinnell is the sixth best or the fifth best defenseman on this blue line or the fourth best or whatever you want to call it, and you leave him out of the roster because of a you know a, a contract technicality and, and the waiver exemption, when you're in a win now year, I, I just I don't know what that says. Like I think that defeats the kind of idea then that you're actually in win now. And I understand you have Nate Schmidt, you have these guys that have big contracts. But we, it's not like this is it's unprecedented for a a big money player to be left out or on the periphery while a young defenseman that has been brought up and bred in this team and developed by this team, you know, finally makes good on his chance and really does make a good, you know, a good impression in, in training camp and shows that he's coming bigger. Um, you look at Billy Heinlein, he's just a piece of muscle now. He's not... You know, it, it, when, he, when he came into the league, he was 181 pounds, and, and it, that was soaking wet. Now he's 185. It doesn't seem like a big jump in weight, but he's a, just a, a, you know, he's a, he's a, he's a finished tank, you know, if, if, if there is such a thing, right? And so he, he, you think about a guy like what he's done and, and the steps that he's done to improve, and his defense has improved, and I think we've seen that this preseason. And then you also add the fact, like, okay, it might not be super consistent for him just yet defensively, but you know that he has this ability to be so good offensively. And that's something, again, this team has talked so much over the last year since Rick Bonus came here, or last year and a half now, that 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 they want to have their defense activated. They want to go and they want more scoring from their defense. Well, if there's anybody in this lineup right now that are in this, you know, in this battle to kind of get in um to the lineup, it's Billy. And and so I, I think the problem is. You know, the Jets have created this sort of on their own, is that, you know, if you're in win-now mode and Billy Heinle is the fifth or sixth best defenseman right now on this team, not just in training camp, but on the team, well, you got to play him. And and the other thing is, what kind of message is it now going to send if Billy has an incredible training camp and the only thing that is keeping him away from his waiver exemption, I, I mean, I think you run the risk of pissing off a lot of guys, well, Billy for sure, but also being like, you know, if you're another defenseman on this team that that's in the system and you're just like, I can have the greatest camp that I've had on this team and just as good, if not better than some of the NHLers, and I'm still not getting in, like, why would I want to still play here? You know, like, I, I, you know, how many years are they going to kick Billy down the road until, yeah, okay, well, now his roster does, the, you know, roster exemption status is now he's not roster or waiver exempt, sorry, and... And so, you know, now they have to actually make a decision. He just gets in because of that. Like, I don't like the idea that the only reason that he's not on the roster is because of, of, of a contract issue. And, and and you know, I get that, that you know, 
the Jets have created this logjam and they failed to alleviate the logjam. And but so when they have a guy, and and it shouldn't be a surprise to the Jets that their first rounder is starting to turn into a pretty good defenseman that can play in the AHL. I mean, this has to be something that you would have you know expected at some point, right? And so if you're just if he's not going to get onto the team because he's waiver exempt, and that's the way, and this it just it, it makes you so you don't lose maybe a Stanley or Chisholm or whatever. I, I don't know. I don't know what to do. I think at that point, if you're really, you just kind of throw up your hands. It's like, send me somewhere else. And I think, it, and that trickles down because if you're another defenseman on this team that still has this log jam, what, what are you expecting? Like, what does Declan Chisholm think then too? He's had a pretty good camp too. He's just had, you know, <clears throat> just hasn't been able to play as much. I, I just don't, I don't know. I, I think it creates more problems than not. And plus, I mean, I think the, the, the be all end all is Rick Bonus has said many times it's about winning hockey games, winning the Stanley Cup, all that sort of thing. How do you not play the guy that 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 has shown in preseason? And that's what a lot of these decisions are based upon often and how they've played. How do you not put this guy into the lineup in game one if he's if he's earned that opportunity and, and burned a run of games? And I think it's beyond that now. I think Billy Hanel has burned a lot of games. And a lot of chance to actually get comfortable in an NHL jersey and an NHL. And we could talk about he had some times last year, but he, you know, he's getting called up to come in and play into Buffalo, and you don't know if he's even going to play that day. And you know, there's just there was a lot of things last year. And sure, he had his chances, but I think again, he's he's he hasn't been discouraged. I mean, I know there's been times where you know he might have asked for 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 a trade, or he's he's shown his his disgruntledness or whatever. But, he, but every time, every summer, he comes back and he's added something to himself, whether it's muscle mass or, or, or you know, just a better defensive player, or both. Um, and so I, 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 I struggle with the idea that if the Jets are all in on winning and they're not going to play one of their best defensemen, well, that's their goal. Um, I, I just don't know what that says. I don't know what it says to the fans. I don't know what it says to the, their defensemen in the system. Um well, what, yeah, it what it says to the rest of the room, what it says to the rest of the room yeah. too. And let, listen, there's always going to be loyalty to guys okay. that have been around, guys that are veteran players, guys that are very well liked teammates. But I, I, I'm with you as well. I mean, there is a messaging yeah. that, you know, I, I say this a lot. I mean, you know, the NHL is the best league in the world. I mean, you have to earn your way there. You have to prove that you belong. Sure. But but when you do. I mean, it is incumbent. It's the coach's job. Paul Maurice always used to say, you know, they do the team, the lineup card is mine. And yeah. for Rick Bonus, um, you know, it's not about developing players or seeing young guys. It's about putting your best team on the ice. And there certainly is a case. I think Hanela has made the case that he is absolutely one of the top six defensemen for the Winnipeg Jets. And, um, like, this game on, on Thursday... And again, we'll see who is sick, who is able to play. Mm -hmm. Not an ideal situation, but I would imagine Billy will certainly be in the lineup. Yeah. I'm interested as to who he plays with. Um, yeah. Because in a lot of ways, I think this game was going to set the tone and basically be almost a mirror image of what we'll see on what next Wednesday in Calgary. Um, but it's it's not easy. You're right. We've been talking about this logjam on the blue line for the better part of uh, 18 months here, Scott. And uh, now it really does seem like the time. And uh, I mean, there is, you know, if they take sort of that easy way out, let them go with the moose, even if they say, hey, this is just temporary. We're going to work things out. Oh, I mean, I do wonder, you know, what that does to the player, uh, what it does to the relationship with the team. Um and I also think that uh, I'm not sure that they're a better team on the ice with him with him out there. Let me ask yeah. you this. Let's say that Rick Bonus comes to the same conclusion that a lot of people have had that this guy needs to play. Who's out? Who are the uh who like yeah. how, where yeah, does he fit? Question. Who is he playing with? And who's the odd man out? Well, I, I think right now the easy answer is Nate Schmidt, and I think it's just because he's been injured, so he's a little bit behind the eight ball, right? I mean it's you know, you're you're hoping that um, you know, he's got some sort of lower body injury, but you know, uh, you know, one thing with Rick Bonus, oh, we hope we have him the next day, and then you hope we have him, you know, the next day after that, and it just turns into weeks sometimes, right? So there's look back to Nick Clay, there's last like Janarian Grant, um, right? Yeah, it is, right? So I, mean, I don't, we don't know the full extent of Nate Schmidt's injury, but we do know that he's been skating. So you have a lower body injury and you've been skating, 
Well, it's a good sign, right? But the, you know, if, if if Nate Schmidt doesn't play on Thursday, um, in the last preseason game, and and I don't know, this is no discredit to, to Nate Schmidt; he's a good hockey player. But you know, for a guy who's getting up there in age, you wonder, you know, what kind of, you know, just how far, how how much behind he might be, right? And and instead, you're going to have a guy like Billy, perhaps who's been in the fight all training camp. And so he's, he's ready. Like he, he's, he is, is, is in as good a form as you can be. But to me, it's, it, it's gotta be Nate Schmidt, right? I mean, that's where it is. And I, I think that's probably the only place I don't think they're taking Neil Pionk out of the, the lineup. Right. I think, I think uh, Neil Pionk had a pretty you know tough year last year. He was injured for a lot of it. He won't talk about his injury. He doesn't want to make it as an excuse. That's fine. Um, but I think they're, th- this team is looking for Nick Neil Pionk to bounce back this year. Um, and, and that it's not going to be Brendan Dillon because he offers the size that they want. And of course, it's not going to be Dylan DeMello or Josh Morrissey because they're the top pairing on this team. Um, I think it's Nate Schmidt. I mean, and the problem that you're going to have here is that you have a guy that's making close to $6 million a year, just under, um, you know, as your seventh defenseman to start the year. And 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 who knows? I mean, if Billy keeps playing well, like, so let's say he actually gets that that chance to be on, you know, on October 11th playing beside, I don't know, maybe it might even be Brendan Dillon because he's, he's played pretty well with Dillon and, and arguably, man, it might not even be arguable anymore that, that Billy's actually made Brendan Dillon a better player. Um, well, while, while he's playing with them. So, you know, I, I to me, it, it's got to be Nate Schmidt. And, you know, I just don't know. The problem is if Nate Schmidt's healthy, I, I'm not entirely sure that that's what the Jets are going to do, right? Because that's just, that's not really their kind of MO. Um, and this goes back to the, you know, the, the decision of loyalty and all that type of thing, right? I mean, you know, you had Nate Schmidt, wave was no trade to come here and, you, you know, but, but at the end of the day, I mean, the Jets have to stop kind of juggling all these balls in the air when it comes to these tips play and just put the best team on the ice, you know, and, 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 and that's what fans want to see. I, you know, like, I think, you know, if we, I haven't been paying attention too much to the chat. So I'm trying to look into the camera here. But, you know, I imagine there's a lot of fans in this chat and, and just fans in general that just want to see the best team. And if you've earned the right to play on this team and some of these young prospects that get spoken up so highly by this team, by this organization from the time they're drafted, you know, and, and over the years. I mean, we've been talking about Billy Heinle since 2019. We've been through a global pandemic. We've been through all sorts of crap. You know, since then, and we're still talking about Billy, and he still hasn't got a shot yet, really, true, truly, um, to to take you know a, a spot on this defense and kind of run with it, making his own. So, I think it's got to be Nate Schmidt if it is, and I think I think there's just a road. I think there's a path to that. I, I think as much as Nate Schmidt might, might not want to, you know, admit it. I mean, I think there there there's a chance here that. And Billy just has overtaken him, and and the, the Jets have then have a problem that they they have a guy. But for now, I think you just have to try it. You just have to try it. Let the guy who actually earned the spot, um, and, and this is it's no fault of Nate Schmitz. He just was injured. But you know that's the way it happened. You can't make the club from the top, right? I mean that's the old uh, the old saying that they have. And I and I and I think that that's a football saying. They don't have guaranteed contracts in football. That's, that's fair enough. <laughs> But I, I just think that you you just run the risk too much, and this goes back to my earlier point: is you just run the risk of pissing off the player, and 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 almost you know just maybe even the team too, right? Like you gotta wonder what these other guys in the dressing room were like, like you know, we're, 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 and, and I don't think they don't get me wrong, I don't think they're saying, well, we don't want Nate Schmidt or whatever. But I think everybody in that dressing room, what, what does this also say to guys like Connor Hellebuck and Mark Shifley, who they're trying to resign? If you're just not willing to put your best defenseman on, here's the question. Here's the question, though. Do you think do you think those guys don't <laughs> see it this way? Like it's easy to read Twitter and see the loudest ten people in Jets Twitter saying, "This is ridiculous. This guy needs to be playing." And again, I'm Why someone that would like to see that much? case. Yeah, but like, I, I just mean that. Like, listen, everyone that you hear those narratives are all done by people that have a. They're all coming. They're, yeah, yeah. They're all yeah, coming yeah. from one serious side. Um, you know, guys that have been talking about Hainala for two years, of course they're saying the same thing. I mean, in some ways, there's an element of proving yourself. I was right. I was right. And I mean, and again, at other times, sure. you know, it's hard to admit that you were wrong. So, I mean, like, it's it's hard to take too much from narratives of people uh, people on Twitter. 
Um, but but I, I'm not, right? I'm not disagreeing like, that that's possible though I, I, yeah. as well. I mean, they think, wow, this guy does bring something and more than anything, more than anything. And I'm not even sure that this is about, you know, what Billy, what Billy brings, because I mean, Hey, listen, he's made mistakes in the past. He's been sure. victimized at times, but so have a lot of the well, other guys exactly on that blue line. I mean, I think right? that's what it comes down to. And, um, but I, I am with you. All those questions, yeah. we'll never know like what's inside of Mark Scheifele's head or Hellebuck's head or whatever about no, but those sort of moves. Wonder if you're not if you're not willing, and you got to think that you know if somebody's playing better defense in car, in front of Connor Hellebuck, I bet you Connor Hellebuck knows damn well who's playing better defense in front of him, right? Just as much as if you know if you're uh, if you're a forward on this team, and 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 you know pretty well that you can depend upon one of your defense moving up the ice. And being able to actually get a zone exit, you're pretty happy if you're a forward on this team. So I, I, I don't, I, again, I don't think this is about, you know, at this point, I'm not even sure it's about biases or anything like that. Billy has shown the way during this training camp that he deserves a spot. And and this is, it's not just fans saying it, it's not just his, his bet, you know, his, his biggest, um, it's, you know, his biggest fans saying it, even his detractors are probably saying it right now and they just don't want to admit it. And so, yeah, I mean, to me, it's, you know, at some point, at some point, something has to give on this team, Haas. And, and 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 you have to play the players that actually deserve the bloody spot to do it. You know, like the funniest it, thing about that is, is that you know I'm sitting here talking about some people that have been saying the same thing for the last year and a half or two <laughs> years. We all have because the situation hasn't changed a damn thing. Well, We're well, still sitting problem, here, right? and now Declan Chisholm has entered the chat, and he is not waivers exempt, and nope. he could go the way to Jansen Harkins. And to me. I mean, listen, we don't need to get into the Kovar Savage situation of last year, but Poor goal last night. you know, you, I, I saw that, you know, you have a young player that has excelled at the American hockey league level has barged into the conversation that, you know, could be a great NHL defense. And I mean, you don't want to lose that guy without ever seeing it. But I mean, to me, if anyone thought that Declan Chisholm had the leg up because of the contract thing, I think the play of Billy Hanel has put him back into that spot right now. And it really is going to be a fascinating. Listen, we've just got a couple minutes left because we're going yeah. to head to the Twin Cities with uh, with Jesse in just a couple minutes. Um, but quickly, what what is the end game for Logan Stanley in the next <laughs> week? I mean, is he potentially just hitting the waiver wire like a lot of former first rounders have been over the last little bit? Yeah, I mean, this is another interesting thing, right? I mean, you know, is this Jets team willing to kind of suck it up and realize that maybe it's just they have they don't have a choice, right? I mean, would you rather lose? I mean, I you know honestly, to me, it, it, it's Stanley right now. It's Stanley and Kyle Capo Bianco that who go on waivers. They might not have to make that decision if Capo Bianco st- is is still injured, yep. right? Um, but you know, to me, I, how do you again? Do you want to? I I don't think you want. You've already lost Kovacevic and Jackson Harkins now. Now Jackson Harkins was completely out of favor with this team. We knew that. We can see it. We saw it. You know, halfway through mm-hmm. camp, right? He scores two goals. And he still can't get into the NHL group. We knew it was happening. That's just the way it was. Um, but I don't think that, that Chisholm or Hainel are falling out of favor at all. I think Logan Stanley just hasn't shown what he needs to show. I mean, there's again, there's always things. You saw the shot last night from the point. Um, but whatever. I mean, he still doesn't show the, the the physicality that he should for being a six foot seven defenseman, right? And, and and his defense just wasn't there last night. And so I, I, I think at some point you just be like, well, Time to give this guy a different chance somewhere else, and 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 yeah, I, I mean, first rounder or not first rounder, I mean, what are you gonna do? I mean, it is the, it is what it is. He hasn't panned out. He's twenty five years old. He was drafted in two thousand sixteen, and it hasn't panned out for him yet. So and there's other how guys. How long are they gonna wait? And well, exactly right. There's I mean, other guys that deserve shots, and and at some point you have to again, if you're trying to win, you have to stop trying to play the players that aren't really helping you win. Yeah, well, I, I don't know what else to say. 